back to our Biosymbiotic podcast and the first podcast of our food and beverage series. I'm joined with me by Marion Thexon. Hey. Nice to see you. CEO and founder of Bioaz. Uh, and she's going to continue my education in the microbiome, gut health, and then most importantly, symbiotics. So I think before we get into the topic of symbiotics and the science of symbiotics, you've had quite an interesting journey to date. So please tell me, like, what's the mot- what was your motivation to develop in- ingredients with functional value? And then how did you arrive at symbiotics? Um, That's a big question, Ian. Um, I guess, first of all, I had a background in beverages. So that gave me a lot of passion for functional foods and doing things that are good for people in everyday Western diets. So that was the first part of the puzzle. And then I worked with animals, um, particularly training racehorses for a long time, and very much focused on gut health and how we could improve horses' gut health through um, different supplementation it's a big, big subject for horse owners. So uh, probably about, I think it was 2018, I had a big leap off the cliff and went back to uni and did an MBA. And while I was doing that, I really focused on how could we bring functional food and functional benefits into everyday foods and landed on symbiotics, landed on the fact that we need probiotics and prebiotics and postbiotics. I reached out to uh, a couple of other people, now co-founders, and we started exploring the journey and seeing if we couldn't bring that research wellness into everyday foods and beverages. So it's a growing awareness in the, around the term of symbiotic. But for those people that aren't as familiar, let's just start from the beginning. And symbiotics, what are they and how do they work? Okay, so... <laughs> By definition, symbiotics are a blend of pre and post uh, pre and probiotics. By definition, um, you could expand that definition to some extent to include postbiotics, and it's something that the scientific world is working and grappling with now is to actually really define prebiotics, really define postbiotics, and then symbiotics. But in in layman's terms, they're beneficial bacteria that are good for your gut that you ingest, they're non-digestible fibres. And by that I mean our stomachs don't digest them. They're digested by the beneficial bacteria in our gut. And then postbiotics are either inactive probiotics or parts of the cells of probiotics. So when you blend all of that together, you have what we call a symbiotic. And the word relates to the synergy of combining those ingredients or combining those factors together amplifies the benefit for people and animals. So why is it so difficult? Why has nobody been able to crack the code of getting shelf-stable symbiotics and embedding that in food and beverages? I know. It's like (laughs) it's been a long journey and I think when I went to reach out to the science team that are now on board with us and said why can't we do this, the reasons were multiple. Primarily, it's not difficult to create and produce symbiotics as supplements. Put them in capsules, have a powder that people have to take every day. It's also possible to do it in short shelf life products that are refrigerated because the main challenge is having a product that has no unwanted microbes such as salmonella or E. coli, but all the good ones still there. So by very definition, people are producing foods and beverages to kill every microbe possible. And we worked out how to do it without killing the good ones. And that's been the challenge. And it's not just focusing on the probiotic. We've identified that, in fact, the combination of the symbiotic, pre, pro and post, is in part the in-house trade secret. And that improves the ability of the whole blend to survive. So just, I mean, it sounds like it's a significant challenge. Mm-hmm. Just yes. try and give us a, a sense of time and how long it's actually taking you to overcome some of these challenges. Well, yeah, good, uh, good question. <laughs> um, so really in um, 2018, the, the seed was planted. Um, it was a niche I had to scratch. Why can't we do this? Um, probably, I think we... So we we ran our first commercial trial. We did a lot of benchtop experimentation 
to validate proof of concept. And after quite a lot of fails, there's some epic failures and runaway events, we got to a point where we could repeat our experiments at temperatures and in conditions such as pH, um, pressure, etc., that mimicked commercial manufacturing processes. So we kind of, we started to get a bit excited thinking we can do this. And then we ran 20,000 units across five different variables and flavours of juices with all sorts of other carbohydrates and things. And it was really nerve wracking. We were um, at the factory, we were watching the pasteurisation temperature gauge wriggle up and down at insanely high temperatures, thinking, we know we're killing all the bad microbes. Please be there, please be there, please be there, please be there. Mm-hmm. When we tested what came out at the other end, and that was in December 2020, we validated our bench top. We killed all the bad microbes. We did not kill the good microbes we put in. And two years later, there's, or over two years now, they're still there. So that's been the holy grail of science and where the Fat, food and beverage manufacturing processes have been the challenge that we've overcome. So that's a little over five or six years in the, in the making to get to this point. Yep. So what is it about the bioas symbiotics that make them so unique? Well, I think obviously there's uh, quite a few elements to that. Um, it's the methodology of blending the symbiotics in the first place, combined with the organisms that we have in our symbiotic blend. So there are organisms that are used in food and beverage manufacturing that are marginally to not successful at all. And there's organisms that are successful. And it's all about the robustness of those organisms that you use. Our Bacillus subtilis subtilis is a very unique, beneficial organism that we've been working on and working with for that, or longer than that in fact, but for a long period of time. And it's demonstrated Um, phenotypical expressions that enable it to survive these really robust temperatures and other conditions that are harsh to certain organisms but not to ours. Fantastic. So that's symbiotics. Thank you very much, Marianne. That's us done for the day. Please like, comment, share the podcast. If there's any information that you need, please don't hesitate to email us on info at bioas.com. 